This lesson deals with some of the properties of capacitance, and you can find these notes in the ECE 201 ebook in Chapter 6, starting on page 1. In the course so far, we've introduced seven circuit elements, a voltage source, a current source, a resistance, and then four different types of controlled sources. In this chapter, we're going to add two more circuit elements, and these are capacitance and inductance. The symbol for capacitance is shown here with a straight line and a curved line. If we label the voltage across it this way, plus to minus, then with our passive sign convention, current will be entering the plus terminal and leaving the minus terminal. The relationship between voltage and current now is that the current is the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. If you graph current on the y-axis, but now the derivative of voltage on the x-axis, you would again get a straight line relationship or a linear relationship. Now what are the units on capacitance? Well, we need to have amps over here, and this is volts per second. So this would need to be amps seconds per volt to cancel that, and it give us the value of capacitance. It's been renamed for Michael Faraday, so the unit is a farad or farads. Use the symbol F. Now given this relationship, which is true for every instant in time, we can make some observations. If the voltage across the capacitance is constant, in other words DC, then the derivative is equal to zero. And so the current through the capacitance is zero, in what we call steady state. What we'll look at in chapter seven is that when you first apply a voltage or a current to a capacitance, the current does change, but eventually it becomes zero. This looks like an open circuit and what we call steady state. Another observation is that if you have a change in voltage, when you go from one level to another very abruptly, then you have an infinite slope as you make that transition. And that would imply that the current has to be infinite. Now that's not possible. So we say that the voltage across a capacitance cannot change instantaneously. We're going to use that as a boundary condition in solving problems. Now if you do force the voltage to change abruptly, you have to supply a lot of current. That is possible and it's one of the problems in power supply design that we'll address in ECE 302. Our equation has that the current is related to the derivative of the voltage times the capacitance. Suppose now we solve for the voltage. So let's integrate both sides of the equation, dt. That's going to cancel this with this. And let's integrate from t0 to t1. You can pull out c here, it's just a constant. And so we've got the integral of 1 dv of t. That's just simply the upper limit minus the lower limit evaluated in our function v of t. And now I can solve for the voltage across the capacitance at some time t1 in the future. So divide by c over here, it's this term here, and then bring this on the other side of the equation. Now this is called the initial condition. This is the value of the capacitance voltage when t is equal to t0. And then we're going to add to that the integral of the current up to some time t1. Now some people don't like to have the t1 here, we just want to put uh, just t, so we can just do a substitution. But when you put t in this upper part of the integral, you can't use t over here. It means something quite different. So we're just going to use a dummy variable, as we did earlier in the course, use i of x dx. We said earlier in the course that power is equal to the derivative of energy with respect to time. So let's integrate here to both sides dt. This will again cancel. Let's integrate from t0 to t1. And so I've got the integral again of 1. And so I'm going to evaluate at the upper limit of energy minus the lower limit. And then I can solve for the energy absorbed by some time t1 in the future as the integral from t0 to t1 of the power plus w at t0. Now what is power? It's voltage times current. What's this term here? What's the energy absorbed by the capacitance at time t equals 0? We can again do a change of variable and replace t1 by t. And then likewise we should change this to some other variable. We'll use x again. Now what's the relationship between current and voltage for capacitance? It's c dv dt, but now we've got v of x dx. The dx is cancel. c is a constant. We're going to bring that out in front. So we have the integral from t0 to t of v of x dv of x plus the energy at t0. Okay, what's the integral of x dx? It's 1 half x squared, so that's going to be 1 half v of x squared. Low will take the upper limit and then subtract the lower limit. And then we've got the evaluation of that integral. But what is this term over here? This is the energy absorbed at t equals t0. But that's also what this is. And we're seeing that two of these are subtracted and so they cancel each other. So the energy absorbed by a capacitance is 1 half cv squared. Derivative of energy with respect to time is power. Now, this is our equation for energy, so let's differentiate that. c is a constant, so we have 1 half c, and then the derivative of v squared dt. This term here can be positive or negative. As an example, think of the sine of omega t. To square that, you've got the sine squared, 
but there's a trig identity that reduces that to the cosine of twice the frequency. And the slope of a cosine function can be positive or negative. So the capacitance can absorb and generate power, but the capacitance can only absorb energy. So what does that imply? That means that it must store the energy and then give it back to you. Like a pitcher, you fill it up with water or juice, and you can just take out so much of that, and once you empty it, there's nothing left. The capacitance is pretty much the same idea. We're gonna store energy in it, and we can take it back out again. This is really implied by the fact that the power can be positive or negative, but the energy can only be positive. And these are some of the properties of capacitance.